بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جمعة مباركة خيركم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم Praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides, will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. We bear witness that there is no God except Allah, the one who has no partner. And we bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amuttaqullah haqqa tuqatihi. ولا تموتون إلا وأن تسلمون أو ye who believe be mindful of Allah be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. رب شرح لي صدري وارسل لي أمري وحلو الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا إلم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم pray that may Allah open the chest loosen make it make easy for me this task and Loosen the knots of my tongue that these words may be understood. And glory be to you, Allah. Glory be to you alone that we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. Verily, it is you who is the all knowing and yet the wise. And, Assalamu alaikum. It's a blessing to be with you all in spirit, uh, whether in this moment here or in the future at some time. Uh, and so, as you know, with the in, in the current time that we're in, we're at the on the precipice and at the midst of another uh, election uh, cycle, another election day that's coming up, and there's likely a lot of anxiety that is around uh, this this election season, but also just in terms of the outcome, uh, not just that, that uh, in, in recent times is probably, you know, one of our more uh, divisive election periods and election years, especially within uh, our Muslim community. And so, you know, there's probably a lot of disagreement on how to vote or who to vote for or whether to vote at all. Um, and, and just thinking about that, there's so many different issues that are coming up and, and so many different things, so many different ethical questions, uh, different kinds of frameworks that we're trying to operate with in terms of what's the best way to, to kind of go about this process and in terms of uh, our our. Uh, perspective as a, as Muslims as a Muslim community, what is our obligation, particularly considering you know the global circumstances of uh, recent genocide in, in Palestine and uh, in, in terms of real worldwide suffering? How, how do we kind of operate in this aspect? And so, regardless of where we you know where where we are uh, landing you know politically and where we are landing in the aspect of uh, you know, choosing to vote for one person or another, or to not vote at all. What's when and and the different anxiety that that's kind of building up at this moment, and you know the frustrations and all these different things that are absolutely valid in in a, in a moment such as this. It's it's important to be able to take a little bit of a step back for us and and thinking about how, regardless of what we choose to do, whether we've already done it or we uh, choose to do on November fifth on election day. What we think about in this sense is, uh, especially as our Prophet Sallallahu has taught us, that as uh, as Muslims we look at those who, uh, not necessarily with envy uh, to those who have more than us, to those who have so much more than us, who have what we would like, but to look at those behind us in a sense, to look at those who do not have as much as us, to look at those who do not have the thing, the different luxuries that we might enjoy. And thinking about that, when we feel anxious up to this moment, when we feel, you know, a kind of, uh, you know, a sense of fear with respect to the outcome of what might come about after Election Day, it tells us that we've got something that we might be afraid of losing. There may be something that we're anxious about giving up or anxious about losing or anxious about being taken away, whatever it might be. And it in and of itself to be able to feel that, to feel that kind of fear, to feel that kind of anxiety, to feel that kind of trepidation is in and of itself a sign of uh, our privilege, that we have something to lose, that we have something that we are uh, anxious about 
uh, being taken away or whatever it may be. And it's important for us as our Prophet said, that said, when we look at those who do not have as much as us, looking in our own society, taking a step back and saying, our America might be very different on November 6th or in January when the inauguration happens, whatever it may be, than it was the day before the election or the day of the election. That for us in a particular part of uh, society or wherever we might be in a community, our America may be very different the next time uh, with, with, you know, whether, or the whatever, whatever the result of the election may be. However, whose America, when we think about it, is going to be the same as it is today and will be the same tomorrow regardless of that election. Thinking about people who are that, that are invisible to our eyes, the people who are on those street corners, the people who are experiencing homelessness, the people who do not have uh, a roof over their heads, likely that's their America today and likely that is their America tomorrow. Thinking about the people who are incarcerated, they're incarcerated today likely will be incarcerated tomorrow, regardless of the uh, outcome of the election. Thinking about the person who is uh, in detention or is a refugee or an asylum seeker, thinking about the person who is uh, the, the widowed or the orphaned, or thinking about all these individuals who are in need, all these individuals who are considered by society as the least of these, for them, maybe their America stays the exact same, regardless of who goes in and out of the Oval Office or who comes in power. But thinking about what does that mean for our obligation? What does that mean for us? That when we are at a point privileged to experience a change in our country's politics, a change in the society around, what does it tell us that uh, what, what we have our obligation to do? What, what does it tell us with respect to these individuals who uh, may not be able to experience that uh, you know, what we are experiencing because of the level of marginalization that they are at, that they have to worry about basic needs, basic security, basic access. And what does it tell us about our obligation that once we go through this election day or election cycle, what, what comes about for us? You know, do we sit back and uh, if the outcome goes as we would like it to go, we just kind of breathe a sigh of relief and just say, okay, see, like, uh, now we can kind of kick it back and just, you know, relax for again, or you know, do we do we you know kind of mobilize? Do we do something, uh, do something a little bit more grand, or do we think about what are, what have we been doing for the folks who are kind of in the margins, who are invisible before, and are we doing the exact same thing, which might not be anything going afterwards? I'm thinking about that when we look at what our what Anne talks about. We we as as we're looking into you know, this this period that we're coming up with respect to the election, you know, our, our Quran tells us that we are a people that, that keep moving. We are people that keep doing something to whether you are experiencing in times of good or you're experiencing in times uh, of distress, you keep moving, you keep doing something. You know, there's uh, in the Quran, uh, it, it, as it relates that, uh, you know, there's, there's this dialogue that, you know, people complain to Allah that we were oppressed in the land. We were oppressed in the land and uh, you know, it was it was unbearable for us to live in the land. And the response being that, well, is the earth not big enough for you to spread out? In? Is the earth not big enough for you to find, you know, some respite? And do you necessarily need to be right where you are? And thinking about, in, in essence, with respect to when we feel like, oh, you know, so-and-so is going to get elected. I don't know if I'm going to, like, you know, stick around here. If I get here, I might go there. Or if, uh, you, know, um, you know, I might move to a different state, move to a different country, whatever it might be. Uh, that's absolutely prerogative. But thinking about in this aspect of having this privilege of movement, having this privilege of being able to do something that recognizing that, you know, if you are facing what you're facing, that the people who are committing injustice, the powers that be that commit injustice, we might think about uh, that, you know, we can do as much as we can, but for some reason, they just, they just don't seem to be able to be stopped. They just, they, they just are not uh, at a point where we can, you know, uh, kind of disrupt their efforts or whatever it may be that they're just continuing to oppress they're continuing to uh, harm in, in, in larger and larger ways and uh, we were reminded by Allah that and think not that Allah is unaware of what the oppressors do he only grants them respite until the day that their eyes will stare in horror that we might not be able to feel like we get to a space where we can bring them to justice in this world but that doesn't mean that 
they will escape the eternal realm of justice, that they'll escape the full spectrum of justice, that for us, from a human convention, justice is just, you know, maybe what happens in this life, or if they get what they, what's coming, or uh, they, they are made to answer for what they've done in this particular life, but whether or not we live to see it, or whether or not they live to see it in this sense, we are assured that uh, on that day, on that day, the day of resurrection, Allah reminds us that on that day, injustice we are to be aware of, because injustice will be a darkness on that day, that Allah will handle the the injustice and the sorting of this and uh, and and the delivering of justice in that aspect. And it's a promise of Allah that they who are the oppressors, they who are uh, committing all kinds of uh, injustices across the world, they can enjoy this life thinking that this is sufficient and this is there's no other life to come, that uh, this is all that there is, um, or that they'll, they'll never be brought to account. And to awaken to a very difficult reality, to <laughs> awaken to what is, uh, as the Quran has talked about, the eyes will stare in horror. At, at what they've done, but also what they will be facing, and thinking about in the sense that our and and as we are also uh, relating with this aspect of what what can we do? Well, because we come sometimes becomes paral become paralyzed by uh, the the uh, trepidation that we might feel and the hesitance that we might feel when it comes to you know uh, a what if situation of you know this this person gets elected, this person doesn't, or this happens, or this happens. And, and reminding ourselves that as our Prophet had advised the young person that, you know, be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. We talk about at the beginning of every khutbah, we read uh, verses um, of taqwa, we read verses of God consciousness and, and, and mindfulness. And in that same breath, that as the Prophet is telling us that be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. Be mindful of Allah and you will find Allah in front of you. If you ask, then ask Allah alone. And if you seek help, then seek help from Allah alone. And know that if an entire nation were to gather together to benefit you with anything, they wouldn't benefit you except with what Allah has already prescribed for you. And if they were to gather together to harm you with anything, they would not harm you except with what Allah has already prescribed against you. The pens have been lifted and pages have been dried. Allah reminds us in the Quran that when adversity when adversity touches a person, that they will instantly run to Allah. They will, you know, look to the heavens and they will they will you know cry for uh, in anguish for Allah to deliver them from this and then you know at the the situation that's causing them uh, distress or anxiety. And as soon as a, a, a touch of respite comes, that person completely forgets uh, where this benefit comes from and they say that this benefit this is from my doing this is from me doing this and the last thing that we we ever want to do in a situation that not only is a bit volatile but one that has various different outcomes and and in no way may be positive for uh you know the, the the majority of folks but thinking about in that same aspect that regardless of what happens on the day before day after an election we don't lose that connection with Allah. Because as the Prophet has told us, the, the pens have been lifted and the pages have been dried, that what has been written is written. That doesn't mean that we don't keep moving. That doesn't mean that we don't adjust to our circumstances. That doesn't mean that we kind of go and hide away and run away from our problems here. Because we live in a society, we live in a space where too many people in and around us are also being marginalized and affected in ways that we don't see that it's incumbent upon us because we will also be brought to account for these individuals. That think about our Prophet has taught us that a Muslim is uh, is is the one who uh, is not the one who goes to sleep while their neighbor goes to sleep hungry. You know, who goes to sleep with their belly full while their neighbor goes to sleep hungry. That we need to be mindful of those individuals, mindful of our privileges, mindful of what is it that we have to lose. Mindful did we forget about Allah when we think about these things that we have that oh i have you know think about just all the layers that are to it that when we start building the different things that we realize that we have if we are able bodied if we are you know citizens of the country if we have voting rights if we have all these other things that people can think about can be taken away have we had a chance to 
beyond enjoying those privileges, be able to thank Allah for each and every one of these, but also to be able to look at our neighbors who do not have one or many of these. So thinking about that, whatever happens on the election day, whoever gets elected, whoever doesn't get elected, that will have in and of itself it, its own effects in, 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 in regards. But to be able to feel those effects largely in that aspect is a privilege. To not be able to feel it tells us that there's a deeper level of marginalization that goes even beyond uh, what we are maybe experiencing on that, on that, in that superficial level in a way. And thinking about what are the individuals who are not going to, you know, see what's the difference between this kind of an America or that kind of America, or this president or that president, and being able to see what can we do to address those needs and what can we do to uh, address those gaps that are there. Lastly, thinking in this aspect that uh, whatever we choose to do, in the sense that at this period in time and at this period at this moment building up to the election, uh, the divisiveness that we've kind of seen, it's not just one that's running on party lines, so it's not just running on certain uh, candidate lines, it's, it's also running within uh, you know, the Muslim community of what is an ethical way of operating to uh, navigate the situation is voting for one person, uh, you know, a endorsement of, you know, genocide, one, not voting for another person, also, you know, a, a, uh, a, a lack of uh, empathy for, you know, what, what, what other people are facing is, you know, voting for somebody else, just, you know, uh, a, a, a stance on what is right and what is wrong. And regardless of how we go about, you know, it's a, it's a political situation, it's a secular election, regardless of how we go about uh, determining who we vote for, what we vote for, where we vote, or how we go about voting, not to lose sight of our own, not just humanity, but our own commonality as Muslims, that regardless of what will happen, the next, this election, day after this election, still in that same aspect, we will still be, if we consider ourselves the people of Allah, we will still be Muslims. We'll still have the same obligations that we do to one another the day before the election, the day of, the day after the election, whether things go bad or whether things go wrong. And it's important for us to see in this moment of divisiveness as we have a wedge growing and ripping through the Muslim community. And we don't lose sight of our spiritual connection of each other. We don't lose sight of our spiritual obligations to each other. We don't lose sight of our obligations to our community around us, to the people around us, that we might differ on so many different levels. And, and our communities within the Muslim communities are notorious for you know, being all over the place with respect to their differences and, and everything like that. But it's important for us to recognize that regardless of whatever we choose, however we choose to vote, however we choose to operate, that we don't lose sight of the aspect of the ummah that we are, the, the oneness that uh, is, is unique about the Muslim community, the oneness that we were molded in, we were shaped in, that we worship in, that we come together in, and we don't lose sight of that. Because when we lose sight of that, the people who really suffer from not just an election year, but to suffer day in and day out, regardless of there's an election or not, uh, just by the way that our society and our country are set up, those people who are the invisible, who are the marginalized, who are the caged, who are the uh, you know outcast, the people who are uh, considered not even people, the alien, all of these different people, they are the ones to whom we have an obligation to help. The mustadafun, the people who are the oppressed of the earth. And so thinking about regardless of what happens, how we come together going forward uh, spiritually, going forward in terms of our uh, collective unity, how we can come together to make sure uh, to help serve and be present for these people, be present for their needs. Because like I said, they for them, America is the same in an election year or not in an election year. It may have a little bit of ebb and flow or whatnot. And so to be at a point in privilege where we can feel the impacts of an election uh, should give us a little bit of insight. What do we have to lose? What do we, what have we enjoyed privilege-wise that we haven't taken, to, that we haven't given proper account for and we haven't given proper thanks for? But also, what is it like to be living a life day in, day out, not having any of these things and having to be at that level of marginalization? So may Allah enable us to be a people of sight, of clarity, a people who recognize the privileges that we have. May Allah enable us to not lose 
uh, cite that each of these privileges come from Allah and anything uh, that we have in this aspect, any good that we have, any any benefit that we have, any privilege that we enjoy, uh, that we, we remind ourselves from where it came. And we also remind ourselves that those same things can also be taken away. We ask Allah to uh, allow us to continue to not only be able to uh, you know, organize and mobilize and 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 worship and and come together, collectivize as a community. But we ask Allah that, uh, especially in the wake of an election, in the wake of uh, a tenuous election and a tenuous time, uh, we ask Allah to uh, protect not just people in this country, the people in our communities, the people who are our loved ones, both here and the people who are suffering abroad, the people who are being genocided, the people who are at the product of war or at starvation, uh, the people who are being harmed just for saying their God is Allah, for people who are being harmed uh, in Muslim countries who are minorities of other faiths, people who are being who are suffering from across the world, may Allah bring about not just their uh, comfort, not just their ease, but also their justice, that may they be able to see justice in this life and inshallah as well in the next. And may Allah enable us to be a people of justice, regardless of how we vote, regardless of how we go about our politics or anything like that, to never forget that we are people who are to be witnesses for justice, standing firm for justice, even if it is against ourselves, even if it's against our families, and even if it's against uh, our uh, the community all around us, that we are to be witnesses for Allah. May Allah always remind us that uh, you know we were not created without purpose, that none of this was created with purpose, and that, inshallah, whatever we do, uh, today, whatever we do tomorrow, whatever we do the day of the election, the day, of, the day after the election, and we don't forget um, what is it that we have not been doing uh, and begin to start doing those, especially for those who have not been considered uh, during this time period. Lord accept this from us. Thou art all hearing, all knowing. Subhanallah. Zakwa khair, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.